I'm Rob Witcher, and I'm here to help you pass the CISSP exam. We're going to go through a review of all the major topics related to physical security in Domain 3 to understand how they interrelate and to guide your studies. This is the final ninth of nine videos for Domain 3. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. Physical security is critical in achieving confidentiality, integrity, and availability. There's an expression I like, if you can touch the box, you own the box. In other words, if an attacker can gain physical access to a device like a firewall or a server, they can easily gain control of the device. This is because our equipment has all sorts of bypass controls built into it, like factory reset buttons. We need to carefully control who can gain physical access to our facilities, specific rooms, and even certain equipment. Physical security is also critical in achieving integrity and availability, as physical security controls like UPSs and generators provide a good clean supply of power, electricity. HVAC systems provide cooling air at the right temperature and humidity, and fire detection and suppression systems help to ensure our facilities don't burn to the ground. All very important things in achieving confidentiality, integrity, and availability. There is one overarching primary goal of physical security, and it is safety of people. People are the most valuable asset, the most important asset of any organization, and physical security controls must prioritize the safety of people above all else. There are five categories of controls used in physical security. Deter, delay, detect, assess, and respond. Deterrent controls discourage things like trespassing, property damage, theft, and intrusion through signage and other environmental design of a building and the land around it. Delay controls delay a risk from occurring. For example, locks delay an attacker from gaining unauthorized access. Detective controls detect if a risk has occurred. CCTV cameras are a perfect example of a detective control. Assess controls are used to determine the method of attack and the target. And finally, respond controls take appropriate action to remediate the risk. When we are implementing the aforementioned controls, we never want to implement a control in isolation. If there's only one control protecting an asset and that control fails, then bad stuff will happen. This is why we want to have multiple layers of controls and at each layer have a combination of preventive, detective and corrective controls or in physical security terms, deterrent, detective and assess and respond controls. This is the concept of defense in depth or layered security. The first layer of defense protecting a facility is often an outside perimeter, like a fence. Another perimeter will be the exterior walls of the building. What is the best way to secure the perimeter? Minimize the number of entrances and exits, the number of doors. Landscaping refers to the foliage around a building, the trees and plants. You want to ensure that foliage is maintained to provide clear sight lines for cameras and that a would-be attacker can't just climb up a tree and into the building. Grading refers to how the land is sloped around a building. You want the ground to slope down and away from the building, so that in the event of a flood, you're nice and dry on an island and not at the bottom of a lake. CCTV, closed circuit television, Camera systems are an important part of physical security as a deterrent, detective control, and can also be used for monitoring and auditing. Cameras are primarily detective controls. Passive infrared or infrared devices are motion sensors. They are essentially really low resolution cameras that detect infrared light, the heat that is emitted by objects in its field of view. You as a homeothermic mammal, when you walk into a room, then the amount of infrared light in the room is going to increase and thus your movement will be detected. These devices must automatically recalibrate themselves if the ambient air temperature changes. Lighting is an important physical security control. A well lit building helps to deter crime and good lighting is important for the safety of people. Card readers are electronic systems used to control who is authorized to pass through a door and into a building or into different rooms within the building. There are two major types of card reader systems, contact and contact list. In contact systems, an employee must swipe their card through the reader for older magnetic readers. In newer contactless systems, an employee only needs to hold their card near the RFID radio frequency identification systems reader. 
badges are simply an employee name and photo on a card. Doors are the primary way we control who can gain access to a building and specific parts of the building. A social engineering attack on doors is tailgating or piggybacking. An intruder follows an authorized person through a door after they've unlocked it. This is a super common and successful attack that can be prevented by using specialized doors, man traps, or turnstiles. Man traps are two doors, one after another. You must unlock the first door, enter a small space, close the first door behind you, and only then can you unlock the second door. Man traps prevent someone from tailgating or piggybacking. Locks are a perfect example of a delay control in physical security. It is just a matter of time before an attacker picks, forces, or breaks a lock and gains entry. Check out the lock picking lore if you don't believe me. Because locks are delay controls, they should never be implemented in isolation. Remember, layered security or defense in depth. There are loads of different types of locks out there. A couple of broad categories are mechanical locks, for example, keyed locks, mechanical combination locks, and magnetic locks. And a second broad category are electronic or digital locks, proximity or RFID locks, electronic combination locks, and biometric locks. One of the most important factors that determines the security of a combination lock is the complexity of the combination. We all love natural light that streams in through the windows, but windows are often the weak link in the perimeter of a building. There are various types of glass that a window can be made out of, plate, tempered, laminated, wired, polycarbonate, to name just a few. But I don't suggest you memorize the different types of glass. Instead, understand a couple of types of sensors that can be used to detect if the glass has been broken. Shock sensors are attached directly to a pane of glass, and they are designed to detect the small shock wave that is generated when a window breaks. Glass break sensors, on the other hand, are essentially microphones that are constantly listening for the specific frequencies of sound that are generated when glass breaks. Which would be better in a loud, occupied room? Shock sensors or glass break sensors? Shock sensors. Walls are obviously rather critical to physical security. It's tough to secure a building that doesn't have exterior and interior walls. I've thrown skimming in here for lack of a better place to put it. Skimming is where crooks, an attacker, uses an electronic device to steal card information from a valid transaction. So for instance, install a little electronic device on a bank machine which records your debit card number or on a point of sale machine to skim your credit card details when you pay for something. Or an attacker stands near a secure door and wirelessly records the RFID communications from your employee card. These are all examples of skimming. Let's now talk about the three major infrastructure services that are critical to the operation of a facility. Network, power, and HVAC. Network means a reliable connection to the largest distributed network in the world, the internet, and or other locations of the organization. It's tough to find equipment nowadays that doesn't require electricity, and harder yet to imagine a business that could continue to function without electronic systems of some sort. Accordingly, security is very concerned with providing a consistent supply of clean power. And by clean power, I don't mean renewable sources like wind or solar, which, which are awesome sources of power, but rather by clean power, I mean alternating current power that oscillates at a perfect 60 hertz with no noise or distortion in the line. It's a perfect sine wave. A couple of important devices that are used to provide a consistent supply of clean power, UPSs and generators. UPSs, uninterruptible power supplies, are basically giant batteries that provide instantaneous but short-term power until the generator has time to start up and come online. Generators are typically large diesel engines connected to an alternator, and generators can provide long-term backup power for hours or even days, depending on how much fuel is on site. There are various types of power outages that physical security is concerned with. A blackout is no power for a long period of time, and faults are momentary losses of power. Power degradation means there is too little or too much power. Brownouts are an intentional reduction of voltage by the utility company. Sags and dips are short periods of low voltage. And surges are a momentary spike of too much power. Think lightning strike, that's a surge. HVAC stands for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. 
These are the systems that provide air to a data center or to a building at the correct temperature and humidity and filter the air. The primary reason we bring cool air into a data center is to cool the equipment and ensure the equipment is operating within a desired temperature range. Thankfully, for the CISSP exam, you don't need to memorize the optimal temperature ranges. HVAC systems also provide air at the right humidity. Too dry and you get static electricity. Too humid and you get condensation. Both are bad. And again, you don't need to memorize the optimal humidity ranges. The final major function of HVAC systems is to filter the air to remove dust and other contaminants. In a data center, the air is being sucked into and through servers and other equipment. And if there were contaminants in the air, they could clog up the equipment, causing shorts or for the equipment to overheat and fail. Related to air quality, you should know a term, positive pressurization. The idea is this nice, clean, filtered air will be blown into the data center at slightly above ambient pressure, thus positively pressurizing the data center. Why would you want to do this? If there are any cracks in the walls or someone opens a door, the nice clean air is being forced out, preventing any dirty air from or contaminants from infiltrating. Okay, now a favorite topic of mine, fire. Fire is a significant risk, and like any other risk, we need to put controls in place to mitigate the risk of fire. Whenever we implement controls, we want a combination of preventive, detective, and corrective controls. What's the best way to prevent a fire? limit or eliminate any combustible materials. You can never entirely prevent the risk of fire though. So if a fire does occur, you want to detect it as quickly as possible. So we'll talk about different fire detections methods in a moment. And as soon as you detect a fire, you want to correct it as quickly as possible. So we'll finish this mind map by talking about different fire suppression systems. All right, fire detection systems. There are three major types, flame detectors, smoke detectors, and heat detectors. Flame detectors detect the infrared and ultraviolet light created by flames. Flame detectors are essentially video cameras that you point at something you are concerned might start on fire. There's always smoke before a fire, and one of the best ways of detecting a fire as early as possible is using a smoke detector. There are two major types of smoke detectors, ionization and photoelectric. Ionization detectors respond more quickly to what are known as flaming or fast fires. Whereas photoelectric sensors, often referred to as optical detectors, respond more quickly to smoldering fires. Most good quality detectors these days are known as dual detectors. They combine ionization and photoelectric detectors into one device. And finally, heat detectors, often referred to as thermal detectors are essentially temperature sensors, and they are monitoring for a rapid rise in temperature. If the temperature rapidly spikes, you probably have a fire. Which of these systems will detect a fire as early as possible? Remember, there is always smoke before a fire, and the type of fire we are most concerned with is flaming or fast fires. So pick ionization detectors. Let's now talk about how we suppress a fire. There are two major types of systems, water-based and gas-based. Water-based systems are cheaper than gas-based systems, but water and expensive electrical equipment in a data center is a terrible combination. So gas-based fire suppression systems are cost justified in data centers. Water-based systems are common in office buildings, hotels, and other spaces where some water is not going to destroy millions of dollars worth of equipment. There are four major types of water-based systems that you should know about. Wet pipe systems always have pressurized water in the pipes, just waiting to be released. Wet pipe systems are the cheapest, but have significant downsides. You can't use them anywhere where the pipes might freeze, and because there is pressurized water in the pipes at all times, you are inevitably going to get leaks. Dry pipe systems look identical to wet pipe systems, but the key difference is the pipes are dry. They're filled with a pressurized gas, and water only comes flooding into the dry pipes when needed. There's also pre-action and deluge systems, and both of those, of course, use water to put out the fire. Gas-based systems use various types of gas to put out the fire. Some gas-based systems displace the oxygen from a room. No oxygen equals no fire. But also, no oxygen equals no human life, so it is critical to have safety systems in place to allow people to exit the data center before the gas is released. 
Another method some gas-based systems use to suppress a fire is to interrupt the chemical exothermic process that is fire. There are four major types of gases that you need to know about. Inergen, Argonite, FM200, and Aero-K. All of them are gas-based fire suppression agents. There's one I'll highlight, Aero-K. It is supposedly safe for equipment. It won't damage the precious servers and is apparently also safe for people. But I'm not keen to test that one on myself. The final tool in your fire suppression arsenal is fire extinguishers. These are the little red things you see all over the place, hanging on a wall. There are five different types of fire extinguishers, A, B, C, D, and K. Each class is meant to put out a different type of fire and will use different suppression agents. There's only one class that I'll highlight, and that is class C. Class C fire extinguishers are designed to put out electrical fires, the type you might have in a data center. And Class C extinguishers will often use CO2, good old carbon dioxide, as the suppression agent. CO2 is an excellent fire suppression agent to use in data centers because CO2 is non-corrosive, it won't damage the expensive equipment, it doesn't leave a residue, doesn't conduct electricity, and provided you don't use too much, it's safe for humans. And there you go, that is an overview of physical security within Domain 3, covering the most critical concepts to know for the exam. If you found this video helpful, you can hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to be notified when we release additional videos in this mind map series, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications. I will provide links to the other mind map videos in the description below. Thanks very much for watching, and all the best in your studies.